When one hears about medical experiments being conducted on humans, there is an underlying assumption that the rights of participants are being protected. However, this was not the case 75 years ago in Nazi Germany. Throughout World War II, Nazi physicians administered medical experiments that completely disregarded the rights of their human subjects. Following the war, the Allied powers set out to bring justice to those who suffered from the war and to punish Nazi Germany, thus leading to the Nuremberg Trials. The trials were specifically conducted to prosecute Nazi personnel accused of committing war crimes. A medical advisor to the trials proceeded to write the Nuremberg Code in the summer of 1947 as an extension of the judges' efforts. The Nuremberg Code was the first document to explicitly establish the rights of subjects within human experimentation and consisted of 10 points promoting three underlying principles. Voluntary consent, clearly calculated intentions that carry significance for society and are supported by prior experimentation, and protection of human subjects. The Nuremberg Code laid a foundation for the field of bioethics, a critical sector of the medical field concerning ethics of medical and biological research. The Nuremberg Code itself was a turning point in history. Not only was it the first time that the rights of human subjects were explicitly documented, but it also established the underlying virtues of justice and respect for human subjects and secured them in law, thereby erecting a permanent framework for the future of bioethics. Prior to the start of World War II, there was little in the way of bioethical standards. One standard that was in place was the Hippocratic Oath, based on Hippocrates' teachings from the late 5th century BC. One of the first recorded instances of ethical thought in medicine, the Hippocratic Oath promoted the general concept of first, do no harm. However, in the 1930s, as the Nazi party gained followers and came to power in Germany, all previously existing medical associations in Germany were abolished and reorganized through the Reich Physicians Chamber, a Nazi-oriented medical organization. The priority of quality medical education was increasingly neglected in order to focus on implementing the Nazi plan for a master race into medical training, causing emerging physicians to develop skewed and biased perspectives on the medical world. During the Holocaust, Nazi authorities encouraged German physicians to conduct experiments on concentration camp prisoners. Many of the experiments were conducted in order to cleanse Europe's population of those deemed unworthy of Hitler's superior race, or for the benefit of German military forces. High altitude and freezing experiments were used to further the knowledge of the body's limits within the context of combat and other deathly situations experienced in battle. Other experiments included bone and nerve transplantation as well as poison injection experiments, which had no scientific objective other than to observe pain levels and damaging effects on the human body. Experiments were performed on subjects, either involuntarily or under the false pretense of release from the concentration camps. Another experiment was also done three times a week, on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and there they would tie both of my arms to and restrict the blood flow. They would take a lot of blood from my left arm and they would give me a minimum of five injections into my right arm. The content of those injections, we didn't know then and I still do not know today. Many of the experiments conducted on prisoners caused either death or lifelong damage to the bodies or were even used as a mechanism for speeding up the process of cleansing the population while remaining under the disguise of scientific research. Following the end of World War II, the Allied nations sought to resolve the issue of unethical medical practice. This came into play during the Nuremberg Trials, a series of military tribunals that began on November 20, 1945, in Nuremberg, Bavaria, and were conducted to prosecute criminals pertaining to the politics, military, and economy of Nazi Germany. The Nuremberg Trials consisted of 12 individual trials, each one specific to a demographic of war criminals. The doctor's trial involved the prosecution of those involved with leading unethical medical experiments. On October 25, 1946, the United States indicted 20 German doctors and three medical assistants on four counts, the conspiracy to commit crimes, crimes against peace, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. During the trial process, the defendants unanimously showed a lack of respect for human rights 
and show little care for morals. These direct quotes provide insight into the Nazi physicians' understanding of their role in the medical experiments, despite their obvious crimes. Of the 23 doctors and assistants tried, seven were sentenced to death by hanging, five were sentenced to life in prison, four were sentenced to up to 20 years in prison, and seven were found not guilty of the charges and released from custody. In addition to these verdicts, American judges felt compelled to articulate the role that ethics should play in the medical community. The judges resolved to write the Nuremberg Code, thereby creating a framework for dealing with future bioethical controversies. They broke the fiduciary relationship between uh, patient and physician, and uh, they harmed and, uh, and killed vulnerable persons instead of providing them care and protection and support. When creating the Nuremberg Code, the American judges reflected on the testimonies and the evidence presented during the doctor's trial, the tragic accounts and gut-wrenching statements that depicted nothing less than complete and utter disrespect for human life. The whole premise, I think, of the Nazi experiments was that uh, the people they were experimenting on had no rights at all. I mean, they, they treated them as if they were laboratory rats. And so it was flawed from the beginning to the end. Some aspects of the trial were especially provocative to the American judges and can be identified as having a direct influence on the code. The negligent and unrestrained manner in which the experiments were carried out, as well as the impulsive and sadistic nature of the doctors, forced the judges to evaluate what it meant to be a doctor and what limits needed to be put in place on this definition. Their evaluation resulted in the set of guidelines which formed the Nuremberg Code, officially enacted on August 20, 1947. The code consisted of 10 points and was written with the intention to establish the human rights of experimental subjects. Therefore, the underlying morals of each of the 10 individual points frequently overlapped encompassing the three general principles of voluntary consent, the intent to progress in a way that is significant for society and is supported by prior experimentation, and the protection of all human subjects. The principle of voluntary consent can be seen in points 1, 9, and 10. The principle of the intent to progress in a way that is significant for society and is supported by prior experimentation is evident in points 2, 3, and 6. The general principle of protecting the experimental subject can be seen most clearly in points 4, 5, 7, and 8. For the first time in history, the rights of participants in human experiments were explicitly protected under law, and the priorities of the bioethics field were forcibly changed to reflect a greater respect for human rights. The new way of thinking set the expectation for experimenters to prioritize the rights of the human subjects above the medical progress or knowledge that one experiment could potentially yield. The Nuremberg Code helped medicine to focus on the patient's needs and on the patient's well-being. So this, in a way, helped medicine to get in touch again with the, its soul. As years passed and more recent bioethical codes were written, the influence of the Nuremberg Code remained evident. The Declaration of Helsinki, a policy written in 1964, contained points almost identical to those written in the Nuremberg Code, such as that biomedical research cannot legitimately be carried out unless the importance of the objective is in proportion to the inherent risk to the subject. This clearly maintains the principle of performing only experiments that are significant to society. The Common Rule, written in 1991, also demonstrated ethical priorities established in the Nuremberg Code. The Common Rule instilled these priorities into modern medical practice through points including that no investigator may involve a human being as a subject in research unless the investigator has obtained the legally effective informed consent of the subject, a point that clearly echoes the principle of voluntary consent that is present within the Nuremberg Code. Even as specific points of biomedical ethics continue to evolve, the underlying virtues that form its framework remain those of the Nuremberg Code, and will presumably continue to exist as a foundation for bioethics in years to come, thenceforth guiding all future codes and guaranteeing the Nuremberg Code's everlasting impact as a turning point in history.